Good afternoon, welcome to the shed. So this afternoon we are going to be doing another plane restoration video. Haven't done one of these for a while. Another eBay purchase. As usual, there's a story. So uh, last weekend I started bidding on this. This is a Stanley number 10. Bit of a rare beast. Um, yeah, so I sort of thought, well, I'll pay about 50 quid because I know they go for a lot of money. That I've seen them for 180 quid. So uh, anyway, so got to about 50 quid. I thought, oh, I'll just go one more bid. So I typed in my maximum bid, which I thought was £51.83. I always go for a random number. Um, but actually I typed in £81.53. I only had about a minute to go. I couldn't cancel the bid because I didn't know what to do. So I thought, oh, I'll just let it, let it roll. So I paid somewhere between £51 and £81 for this. Actually, I paid £63. That's what it went for in the end, which is OK. It was a bit, I probably wouldn't have gone that far had I not accidentally overbid. Anyway, these things happen quite a lot to me. Um, yeah, so it's a lovely little plane. This is what you call a rabbit plane or a rebate plane. I think the, the Brits will call it a rebate. The, the Americans will call it a rabbit. And as usual, the British think they're right, but it's probably the Americans that are right because rabbit comes from a French word for alleyway or cutaway or something like that. So I think as usual, they've got it right. It's in pretty good condition. And it's a good old clean. Um, it's pre-1957, because that's when they stopped making them. It's uh, made in USA, but the blade, I presume, is a replacement because that is made in uh, the made in Britain, made in England. So that's a bit of a downside as far as value is concerned. The uh, USA blades are better, but they don't make them anymore. So that's why you can still get the, the British blades, or you could for a longer time. That's why a lot of them ended up with British blades. Uh, I think it's pretty much original. Bit of, uh, I'm not sure what to do about the Japanning on this or the paint. Uh, yeah, maybe it has had a coat of paint. I think I probably will strip it down, although it's a bit of a sort of thing on the tool forums. Oh, you mustn't paint it, you mustn't take away the original finish. Well, I know that, but to be honest, it's already gone, so I might as well refinish it. Apart from that, it's in good, good nick. Rosewood handles, the tool knob. And it's marked K Weaver, K F Weaver. So somebody obviously was quite proud of this. So a good clean up, a paint, strip back the knobs, polish it up. I have already sharpened it because the blade was in such a mess. I thought oh, I, I was didn't have anything to do last night, so I came out here and sharpened that for half an hour. It took a long time to get it back to straight. It's still not quite 100 percent, but. Pretty, pretty good and I've tried it and it works well. So the first job is not to strip it down, which is what I normally do. It's to try and flatten or lap the sole of the plane. So we're gonna do that first. I'll take you over to the bench. Okay, so I've got some 400 grit. That's getting a bit low on that. So I need to get some more of that. Um, now, the reason you do this with the blade in situ is because apparently it can twist if it's not. I don't know, I probably don't need to go to that sort of level of accuracy. But you leave the blade in, but just back it right up. Yeah, when I sharpened this, it had an angle of about 45 degrees on it, so I don't think it was hardly even engaging. Okay, so I'm not gonna give it too much, just a little bit to see what we've got. I didn't say that there are actually a few scratches in this, so I'm never I'm not going to go for a full smooth finish. Just wouldn't be able to do it. Okay, that's finished off on the thousand grit. 
that's pretty flat there is some pitting I think it's been rusty at some point and been done up once okay let's take her apart let's see what we got lever cap bit manky most of the uh, nickel plating or whatever it is has come off so I'll probably have to take the rest of that off and go back to bare metal Now, because this has got a full width blade, it's a bit of a bugger to get out, but it is possible to do it. And you can see that it's done some damage, people taking it out like this, but it is possible. So some of these, apparently they break here quite often because it's a weak point on the plane, although I can't see that this has been repaired, so I think we're good. But it has had some knocks. Okay, that's that bit. Frog. This doesn't have an adjustable frog, so well it is adjustable, but it's manually adjustable. We have to slide it. On the later ones, they have a screw on there. Weirdly, this seems like it has the place for the screw, but there's no uh, no mounting there. Maybe not. Oh no, maybe that's just the back of that screw. Okay, yep. Yeah. Brass knob, that would clean up nice, as per usual. Yeah, I'll probably leave that black. Just clean it. But it's this back piece here, which I'll show you, and I'll see if we decide what to do with that. Well, I haven't decided yet, but I will decide. Brass knob, brass screws. Okay, that's all the constituent parts. So at the back here, we've lost quite a lot of the paint or japanning as it's called. I don't know. I think it's worth cleaning it up and painting it. We'll have a look. And at the other end, see number 10, made in the USA. There you go. That's the first stage. Um, I should probably clean up the body first so that if I need to paint it, I can get that done soon. Uh, and that'll take, because that takes a little while. Same with the knobs. So that'll be the next job. Body first, then the knobs. I'll just show you this blade. So you can see it has the full width blade and you can see I have cleaned it, sharpened it, got a reasonable edge on there although I can improve it a bit more. Okay.
I have painted the handles. That's the tote. And that's the knob. Spent quite a bit of time this time uh, sanding them down properly. And I'm going to give them a good 24 hour, 48 hour cure on the first coat. And then they're going to get a second coat. I also bought some of this, some Hammerite spray, black. I've used the green before, which is really good. And some paint stripper. So I've seen a few people on YouTube use this to take the paint off planes. So I thought I'd give it a go. It's a fairly thick old mixture, which is good. Not very nice stuff though. Oh, I can smell it working already. Okay, I'll get that on there. And I'll show you. It's going to take a couple of coats. I'll get that on there and show you in a little while. I had some success with the um, paint remover. It didn't get rid of everything, uh, but it's got rid of most of it. Uh, and I've already given it two coats of the old Hammerite. I am struggling with my finishes again. I don't, I don't know if it's the temperature or if I'm just going too heavy. But I can't seem to get an even coat. Anyway, I'll give it another coat, a very light one this time, see if that helps. Okay, that'll do. And I'll come back. Okay, so it's time for reassembly. Um, the body turned out okay in the end with the uh, spray paint. I think I was just going on a bit too thick, so I'll know that next time. But I'm not very happy with my handles. They're a bit wrinkly, so I'm not going to do about anything about those at the moment, but I will go back and repaint them or give them another coat. I'm going to have to get some spray varnish, I think. I think that's the answer. Okay, let's take the tape off here. The other thing I noticed is the metal, I don't know if it's the atmosphere at the moment, but it goes, uh, discolours very, very quickly. So I've got some oil on a, on a, in a rag. So as soon as I'm going to give it a quick clean and then wipe it with a bit of oil, hopefully that'll uh, stop it discolouring quickly. This isn't coming off very quickly. Okay, that's the tape removed, it took a little while. Um, I'm just gonna run a little bit of paper, sandpaper around the edges, just to take off any spare paint that's on there. Okay, let's put it back together. I always go to put the handle on last, but actually it needs to be done first.
this one doesn't have the uh, adjustable frog. Well, it's, it's adjustable, but it doesn't have the micro adjust screw. So it's just a question of putting the screws in, using your finger to feel it's right, and uh, tightening it up. Reverse thread on these catches me out most times, but not this time. Finally, the blade, or the iron. Okay, that's it, done, completed. Looks nice, doesn't it? Very nice indeed. Okay, I had a bit of a rethink on the handles. I started to test it and the finish started coming off. And that was after 48 hours plus of uh, curing. So I gave up with that and I've gone back, I've stripped it back and gone for an oil, oil finish, which actually feels nicer. It doesn't look quite as, as super, but it looks, looks pretty nice I think okay so I spent also spent quite a bit of time setting it up getting it right like all of these planes you've got to get them set up right I resharpened again what that is on there and it's now running beautifully so just on a piece of pine <laughs> Back that off a bit. You can tell just by the sound that that's, that's good. going against the grain a little bit so let's flip that around
go thinner again. That's it. I'm going to stop you using this as a plane. It's just got the edging facility. Oops. Not very good with the one handed. There we go. It's a lovely shaving, isn't it? Okay, let's uh, show you how we put the rabbit on this piece of wood. So the way I'm doing it is with the plane on its side. If I had a, uh, a way of fastening the wood to the bench top, I would be able to do it along the top. So I've realized that I need some bench dogs fairly quickly, but we can sort that out. More news on that later or soon. Okay, so that is the rabbit that I'm going to cut. small amount off there. There we go. I'm going to have to adjust that. Hopefully you can see that taking the uh, shaving. So hopefully you can see that rabbit that I've cut there, nice and straight, should be just about the thickness of this, it is, with a bit of practice, you could call me a carpenter. So once that groove or rabbit is established, you don't actually need the uh, guide anymore, you should be able to do it by hand, first time I tried this. so. It's a bit of a steadier hand, but there's no reason why you can't do it by hand. And I'll go from the other side. There you go. Okay, that's the end of that one. Um, yeah, went really well. Really happy with this. Lovely plane, really. Really nicely made. It's a bit beaten, beaten about, but uh, you know, good one for the collection. Definitely going to use the uh, oil on the knobs in future uh, and handles because it just the, I just can't get along with the varnish. It doesn't seem to work. But yeah, very happy. Good plane. One for the collection. So if you're interested in some similar uh, restoration videos, I'll put a couple on the screen for you um, and you can subscribe and do the usual stuff as well. Thanks very much for watching. See you soon.